Hey everyone, I'm Wingman and welcome to this tutorial on procedural generation. Today we're going to be uh, using Godot's built-in tools to create an unlimited amount of really cool Earth-like planet maps like this with oceans and continents. Let's dive in. First we need something to hold the image that we're going to generate. So go up here to other node um, and add uh, sprite 2D is under node 2D, down here in alphabetical order, sprite 2D. Um, so, the, so there's no image associated with it yet, but under texture here, we have the option to add a new noise, text, noise texture 2D, and that's what we're going to do because Godot has uh, the ability to generate these noise, noise maps in the engine itself without having to write your own code for it, which is a really incredible feature. Um, so we've got a couple of parameters here. First one we're going to look at is width and height, um, which is the size of the image, of course. Uh, since we're generating a rectangular planet map, uh, let's bump this up to 1024, give us a nice rectangle. Uh, we don't need to save yet. The other parameter we're going to look at is seamless. Let's toggle that on for now, and I'll circle back to it in a minute to explain what that does. Um, and now noise here. This is where the magic happens. New fast noise light. And boom, in just a couple of button clicks, we've already got um, some pretty looking noise here. You can see it kind of looks like what a Minecraft map looks like from above. Uh, you think of the white as mountaintops and the black as valleys or rivers. Uh, but you see you've got some terrain that if you zoom in might look kind of accurate. You've got, you know, mountain range along here, little river over here, a pond here, uh, some flat areas or, or areas over here. Uh, but we're going to do a little more with this, but uh, it's a good starting spot for now. And we can, we can control what this looks like with the parameters inside Fast Noise Light. Uh, first thing to look at is the seed. This just seeds the random number generator. Um, as we change the seed, it's giving us different maps, uh, but still based on the same parameters, so they're looking pretty similar. Uh, if you give the same seed the same parameters, it will generate the same map every time. That's, that's kind of what seed is for. Frequency here. Uh, frequency is... If you think back to your physics classes uh, in high school, it's essentially kind of the distance between peaks and troughs on the map. Um, and easy way to see that is to zoom all the way out here to a frequency of one. We've got these really tiny, it's almost just a pixel by pixel noise. Uh, as we slowly zoom in, you can see it start to as we get closer, you can see it start to zoom in a little bit. Uh, we have a little more going on here. And once you get to about 0.1, that's when things start really changing. Uh, we're, we're seeing, I, I kind of think of it as the zoom parameter, even though it's not mathematically accurate. Uh, so you zoom in closer and closer. Uh, so let's set that back to the default for now. Um, before I get too far away from this discussion, I do want to circle back to that seamless parameter I mentioned a minute ago. Uh, that does what it says in the tin, uh, where basically what's on each side matches up to what's on the next side over there. So we can see this kind of mountaintop here matches up to that mountaintop there. This little valley leads into this valley here. Get a little valley into little valley, mountaintops into mountaintops. Uh, and I believe it does, yeah, it does the same vertically as well, as you can check. Uh, so I'm poking around. So if we're generating, you know, a, a planet, I think of it as a cylinder pretty much. So only I only really care about this side matching this side uh, because we're not actually generating 3D. Uh, that's going to be important because if we have, say, a continent on this side of the map, we want it to also generate a continent on this half so we don't just have a random continent ending at the edge of the map. Uh, so anyway... To continue adjusting how our image looks, we're going to look in here under the fractal parameters. The fractal is what actually does the math here. Uh, don't worry too much about type. Uh, octaves is the big one here. And the easiest way to explain that will be to uh, actually swap over to good old MS Paint. So noise at its heart in one dimension is just a sequence of values that uh, kind of go up and down in a reasonably fixed interval like this. And this interval here is, uh, again, if you remember from physics, that's our frequency. We'll call that F. That's this variable here we played the, with a minute ago. Uh, these kind of peaks and troughs, they're going to be about the same distance from each other. And remember that. 
Uh, so if we generate just this, let's erase those because they're getting in the way. If we generate just this uh, single octave of noise, we got a nice smooth kind of up and down pattern. Uh, but if I'm generating, I want to generate a mountain range for my game. Maybe I want to make the next Skyrim, something with really jagged, rough mountains. And these just aren't cutting it for me. It's too smooth, too pretty. It's not intimidating and scary. Uh, so that's where our octaves come in. We can generate another line of noise. Maybe something like that. Uh, but the frequency is going to be a lot smaller than this frequency here. And that's what an octave is. It's generating a new line of noise with a smaller frequency, and then we add those together to get something like this. Please ignore my terrible drawing skills. And as you see, it's following the same basic shape of this one here. Kind of short peak there, tall peak there, medium peak here. But we've added a little bit of extra noise to our noise. So it's getting a little closer, looking nicer. We want to add maybe something even smaller. Looking like that. Again, I'm a bad artist, but we can see our frequency is getting even smaller with every octave. And so that is going to get us some really scary, jagged looking mountains like this. Uh, again, forgive the terrible artistry. Uh, but again, we're generating smaller and smaller frequencies and then adding the smaller frequencies to our original thing to get additional noise each time. And that's what this octave variable does here. If we switch back into our game engine. Uh, it's easiest, easiest to see if we go up to one octave. Look how smooth that is. It just kind of goes uh, it's dark here, up to smooth, smoothly white there, and then back down to dark. As we add an octave, you can see it getting a little bit more definition. A little bit rougher, a little bit more up and downs. And now we're getting a more and more defined shape. We can get uh, all sorts of peaks and valleys within our peaks and valleys, and that's where we get real interesting terrain, not just straight up ups and downs. So now let's talk about how to make this black and white height map into a blue and green Earth-like planet. And the way to do that over here is under color ramp. We're gonna add a new gradient. Um, it starts off just black and white as is, but we can click these two little bars here. Uh, this bottom one here is highlighted. Um, if we click it, and let's set that color to, sorry, blue uh, for the water. And this top one, click the big box here, to green for the ground. Um, and that gets us, uh, you can kind of see the direction we're headed. Uh, blue and these, they look more like rivers than oceans for now, but we'll fix that later. Um, and then green on our mountain peaks. And, the easy, and what these bars do, if we, if we drive them closer to the center, that says everything below this value just make this color instead of on the gradients. Now everything below, kind of below the middle, is going to be just the solid blue instead of the blue gradient. And as we do the same with the green, we start to see, oh, that's solid water, that's solid ground, and these are kind of in between areas. And But if we go into raw data and offsets, we can set these directly on top of each other. And that'll get us these nice hard cut off edges uh, for a true just land map versus water. Uh, we'll come back and play with that a little more in a minute. Uh, but for now, let's take a look at what we have so far. This is a map pretty similar to what a lot of common survival games look like, like Minecraft, where you've got kind of these stringy continents and stringy oceans. That's kind of the nature of default the noise values. Um, again, it works if you don't want your land to be too far away from the land and you want all your land to be close to something that feels like ocean. Uh, if you zoom in really close from a player's perspective, this feels like, oh, I want a bay looking at next to this ocean uh, continent on the far side. Uh, so again, it depends on how close you're looking at. But if we're trying to take this global view and say, let's generate full continents, we're going to need to play with those uh, parameters a bit. Uh, the big one here is this frequency that we discussed in Paint a minute ago. And if we start bumping this down to 0 0.09, remember I, I compared this to a zoom value earlier, 0 0.005. We're zooming in, we're getting bigger and bigger shapes that look a little more like continents. Uh, I've often found the 0.003 to be my 
favorite value for this sort of thing. Uh, we've got a few kind of continent type shapes. You can go as low as 0.001. It won't let you go any lower. Um, here's a little, that's a little too close. Uh, so yeah, play with that as you like. Uh, 0.003, 0.003 is typically my favorite value. Um, and here with the hard cutoffs, we can see, uh, again, what the octaves mean. That's one octave, those very smooth shapes. Just getting slowly rougher and rougher the more octaves we add. Uh, five is fine. It's a pretty standard number. Um, then you get lacanarity and gain are going to mess with uh, kind of the roughness of it, of the uh, the drawing in different ways. Uh, okay, my, favorite, my favorite values are probably three for lacanarity and 0.4 for gain. Uh, but play around with it yourself and just see what you like, what what you generate. And the other thing to play with is kind of the water level cutoff. That's going to be back up here on the color ramp. We can set these up to, say, 0.6, for example. Um, and that'll basically raise the sea level um, to get us a little smaller continents. We can go even higher. Any smaller continents or go all the way down for, you know, more land-based worlds with smaller oceans. Uh, again, 0.6 is typically where I've found uh, to be... Oops, I messed that up a little bit. Hold on, okay, it's mad at me again. There we go, fixed it. Uh, you may have to play around with those a little bit, and this button will, will swap things back and forth. Uh, the reverse mirror gradient button. Yeah, so yeah, 0.6 is a value I typically tend to like um, for very Earth-like continents. Uh, you got some bays, some islands, some roughness at the coasts, even some nice little inland lakes. Uh, there and there. Got some cool shapes. I really, like, I really like the shape of this bay here. You can see, like, this here would be a good place to build a city, um, cool maritime city on this very protected bay facing the ocean. Um, and we can go down here to this seed that we mentioned a minute ago and using these same parameters, we can get a bunch of cool planets that look pretty similar. Uh, oh, that's a cool one here. I like this one. Uh, look at this kind of archipelago here. That's fun. This is all just procedurally generated. We didn't draw these maps at all. Um, yeah, look, how, look how cool some of these island chains look here along the edges of the continents. Uh, this is looking almost like a awesome Mediterranean cradle of civilization kind of bay. And and there you have it. That's how to, uh, with just a few clicks of buttons, uh, a few little playing with parameters, not a single line of code, and we've generated some beautiful planet maps that look just like this. Hope you have a good day.